Welcome to The Call. I'm Melissa Francis along with Larry Kudlow and Trish Regan, who's at the New York Stock Exchange on a very strong market day here so far. Take a look at that. Ford now, though, is releasing its auto sales figures for July. Uh, they are expected to be very strong. We're awaiting those numbers any second here. CBC's Phil Lebeau is at a Ford dealership in LaGrange, Illinois. Phil, what do we think we're going to see here? We're going to see the first monthly sales increase in two years by Ford. Melissa, these numbers from Ford are strong largely because the retail numbers are positive. Interestingly enough, Ford's fleet sales, the ones that go out to the rental car companies, corporations, those are going to be negative year Second. over year. But because of so much demand with cash for clunkers, we're going to see positive numbers so for the first Phil, time in two years Phil, i got to interrupt you for Ford. a second. We are getting that number. It is up 2.3 percent. That is the number um, for July for Ford sales up 2.3 percent. What's your reaction to that? That's about what we would expect. Keep in mind, these guys were down about, what, 24% just three months ago? To make that much progress in three months, that, that's astounding. So this increase here, people are going to look at it and say, wow, just up 2%. Think about where these guys are coming from. And remember, this is the first of the big six automakers to report a monthly increase in seven months. So there's nothing but positives in these numbers. What, what was June like, and how much of this do we think comes from cash for clunkers? I mean, the program hadn't, well, it started at the end of the month. Was it, was it counted in that? No, cash for clunkers didn't officially start until about eight days ago, nine days ago. George Pippis, who is in charge of sales for Ford, uh, he joins us live from Ford headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan. George, uh, you heard the question from Melissa. Uh, when you look at your monthly sales increase going up a couple of percent points, how much of that do you attribute that to being cash for clunkers uh, bringing in buyers? Well, we had a solid month underway, another market share increase, Phil, but uh, we felt like we were probably going to fall short of last year's sales levels. Um, retail, we thought we might have a chance. As you can see from our release, our retail sales were up 9%. I heard you make the point that uh, fleet sales were down, uh, and that kind of reduced the overall increase. But cash for clunkers put us over the top. Uh, lots of traffic and lots of sales at Ford and Lincoln Mercury stores uh, in that last week. So, George, can I just... George, the big question is whether or not this is sustainable. Is this a, a sugar high, a one-time, bring in the buyers, you're stealing from the future, or are we looking at something here where we see a churning in the market where consumers are really going to start coming back into showrooms? Well, I, I do think there's some latent demand, Phil. You know, you've reported uh, over the last several months that demand for new cars and trucks is well below just replacement demand. And so what we think happened is that people that were driving, uh, for example, Ford Explorers that they had purchased in the 90s, uh, took this opportunity, took out some insurance on higher fuel prices. And our estimate, Phil, is that in addition to the $4,500 that they might have saved on the new vehicle purchase, trading an Explorer for, let's say, a Focus or a Fusion, that the, that the annual gasoline savings to these consumers is in the $1,500 range on an annual basis. So this is not going to have only a first-time, you know, a catalyst effect on the economy, but also it ought to be the gift that give, keeps on giving, not only in terms of lower fuel consumption, but lower emissions. Uh, frankly, I can't think of a program ever that has, that has been so positive in so many ways uh, across the board, environment Clearly, and the George. economy. Well, can I, can I just jump in here, George? Look, I, I want to see sales rising and, and, and economic recovery. But the Wall Street Journal editorial today called this cash for clunkers crackpot economics. Just give them free money away, free vouchers away. And let me ask you, a lot of people are skeptical. Let me ask you, is this cash for clunkers surge borrowing from next year. So we're going to have like a double dip in car sales because of the one-time effects of this cash for clunkers business. Well, Larry, I think that's a, that's a good point, and, and I'm, I'm certainly uh, willing to acknowledge that not all of the sales from the cash for clunkers program is incremental. After all, um, nobody thought that this would just add 200 or 250,000 sales to the bottom line. We were fully expecting that some of the sales in this period were sales that could have happened in the last nine months or might have happened in the next nine months. But actually, I mean, I think the economy needs this lift right now. Uh, there's nothing wrong with borrowing from the future when you need to kickstart the economy. Uh, it's still pretty fragile out there, as you know. 
I do think this, Larry, and I've heard you say this on, on, uh, on air several times. Uh, a stimulus program works best if you put the, ha- the money in the hands of the consumer. Right. And I think that's what we saw. But, George, you know, this is Melissa Francis. I want to keep everyone honest on the numbers here because we're talking about 250,000 transactions was, or sales, I guess, was the number that was quoted. But that includes the car that was clunked and the new car. So really it's only, you know, somewhere between J.D. Power says 110,000 new cars sold to maybe if you took that other number and split it in half, it's 125,000. That, that's not a huge number based on, you know, total sales in the economy or what you really need. What does that mean to you in terms of Ford sales and how many jobs could possibly be saved? I'm trying to get my arms around what yeah. real quantity we're talking about here because it seems tiny, even though we're so excited. Well, you know, I, I, that's totally right. I mean, even at 250, even if you take the, the high end kind of a number, uh, that's what, 2% of a 10 million sales year. Um, so, um, if I did the math right, I never was very good at math, that's why I'm a sales analyst. Uh, but in any case, uh, you're right. I mean, it wasn't all that long ago that we had several 17 million sales years year after year from 1999 to 2006. I think what the economy needs is a little spark, is a little uh, uh, match uh, on, this, on, this dry, uh, on this dry tender box that we've got and see if we can't get things started. It's a good uh, I don't think it's the be-all, end-all. George, sure. gonna affect, is it going to affect production? Let me ask you this. Are production schedules going to be ramped up? Because that's an important GDP contributor and an important Great economic point. bellwether. You know, I would have been disappointed if you guys had not asked that question. Uh, I will say this. Uh, as you know, over the last several months, you've been monitoring it, Phil. We've increased production several times in the second quarter and in the third quarter. Our third quarter production is up over a year ago, 16 percent. You know, the questions you asked, we're going to try to take a pencil to the paper this month. In fact, in this coming week, we'll begin that process tomorrow. And we're going to try to figure out how much of the program is incremental, how much of it would have happened anyway, and, and, and think about our production schedules in that context. One of the big open questions is whether they're going to go ahead and release funding for phase two, you know, cash for clunkers 2.0. That's going to have an important bearing on, on what we do between George? now and the end of the year. But we'll George, announce give me your production. best estimate real quick. George, give me your best estimate real quick. I know you guys are looking at at production schedules. Your best estimate, how much of this is incremental, how much of this is sales that would have uh, automatically happened? Estimate from you right now. Our our feeling is roughly about 30 to 40 percent of the business was going to be incremental to the 2009 calendar year. So that's that's as good as I can give you right now, Phil. I will say this. I think the light vehicle SAR probably approached the 12 million range in July. And as you've known, we've been trolling along in the 9 million yep. range for the first six months of this year. You made the point earlier, that's right, sales were down 35% for the industry in the first half sure. of this year compared with a year ago. So a 2% increase, while it's not much, it's a whole lot better than a 35% decline. And- and George, you'll take it. Ford uh, Sales Chief George Pippis joining us live from the Ford headquarters in Dearborn. There you have it, Larry. Uh, his belief that, yeah, there's some incremental effect of cash for clunkers, but they believe there's a churning of the market that's going on, which certainly speaks to the underlying demand improving for I'm auto I'm all for sales. the Ford churn. I'm, all, I'm just not for sprinkling helicopter money on everybody to buy cash for clunkers, but the debate goes on.